Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. Graduation is here, not just for college students, but high school students as well. Looking for job opportunities after leaving school can be ripe with scams. Fake job postings, phony offers, and high pay are all techniques that scammers use to lure unsuspecting job seekers down a road to financial loss and big disappointment. So today, Kevin Rowney joins us on the On Your Side podcast. He's a tech expert with Norton LifeLock, and he specializes in computer security, privacy, and identity protection. He tells us all the tricks scammers use to attract job seekers, and more importantly, he tells us how to not become a victim. This is On Your Side with Susan Campbell and Gary Harper, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Okay, welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Todd Martin, you, audio engineer. Yeah, you, you almost forgot your last name there. There's yeah. A little, there was a little bit of hesitation. It's like your own phone number. You don't say it very often, so yeah. you kind of forget it. Yeah. Well, you're dragging this morning anyway. It's kind of early today. Yeah, it's a little early for us. We yeah. normally record around 11 or yes, something like that. Right. This is a little. This is a couple hours earlier. Yeah, this is, uh, this is early for Todd. So, hey, uh, we're talking about... Um, job applying for jobs today um very obviously everybody seems to be looking for a job particularly high school grad or high school students as well as college students do you remember back in the day when you graduated from um college and applying for jobs yeah i mean i i I thought that i was going to have to go work at a tv station in like a very very small market right and i didn't think i was ever going to start in a large market like phoenix right but i just hounded the the lady that worked in the department that I started in editing videotape and I called her every Thursday at the same time and she just got to the point where she would answer the phone hi Todd oh boy and it took a couple months but I started here in in Phoenix yeah um do you remember mailing out resumes so I'll just tell you um this is going to tell you how old I am but I was sending out resume I was mailing out resumes so I I am pre-internet okay when I was around sending out resumes there was nothing I mean, the internet was not even a blip on the radar. So, you know, you had to put the right postage on and of course, trying to get into the TV business. Remember those tapes that we would have to send out, the three quarter inch tapes about the the size of a small phone book. Yeah. And again, people probably don't even know what a phone book is these days, but uh, it was, it cost a a massive amount in postage when it came to to mailing out those tapes and uh, the resumes and all the cover letters. And it kept the, it kept the post office in business. Yeah, I think like a lot of things now, things are just different than they were 20 years ago. Yeah. That the internet really has changed how you uh, search and yeah. apply for jobs. It's it's a it's a great tool and a great resource, but it comes with a lot of um, seedy things that you know take advantage of people. It's it, it, there's some pitfalls when it comes to the internet, and we're talking about job scams. You have to be very careful because the scammers love to hang out on the internet and they love to prey on people looking for jobs. So we're talking to Kevin Roundy today. He's a tech expert with Norton LifeLock and specializes in computer security, privacy, and ID protection. How are you today, Kevin? Uh, doing great. Great to be with you. Hey, thank you for being on the On Your Side podcast. Let's just jump right into it. So we know you're a tech expert. You know what to look out for. If you're a uh, newly, if you're a newly gr- graduated person, whether it's high school or a university, what do you look out for? What's the number one thing out there that students or graduate students need to look out for? What do they need to prepare themselves for? Yeah, I think the main thing, like like you're, you're talking before, right? You are reaching out by mailing things to people that you, companies and organizations that you trusted, right? So you had like, uh, you knew them by reputation, you knew how to find the make sure you're talking to the right person. Um, you know, when you when you apply for a job, you're revealing a lot of personal private information that can be used uh, against you, right? So it can be used to seal your identity. It can be used, you know, if they if they ask you for your social security number and these things. I think the main thing is to try and get as much of that trust and make sure that you're verifying that you know who you're talking to, right? If you're if you're straight out of high school or or, or go out of college, you want to work for you know you want to work for a company that you trust and that uh, 
you know, especially if you're straight out of high school, it's probably going to be a job that's in person, right? So why would they interview you and do everything online, right? It makes you want to you want a person who's going to ask you to come in in person. You're going to see the store. You're going to see the 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 place where you're going to be working, and uh, and so that way you can get a lot more confidence and and that it's really who you who you you know a person that you can trust that is that's going to offer you a real job because a lot of times what will happen is you'll get maybe unsolicited email offers or you may find advertisements for jobs online that sound fantastic right sound like a dream job even work from home kind of situations um but you 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 know these will there'll, there'll often be a lot of red flags that pop up once you start to interact with these people you really want to get you want to get that in-person trust as much as possible. So these scammers are really good. And we'll just start off and you've kind of taken, um, you've kind of talked about this already, fake job postings. That's a big way to kind of lure in people who are looking for a job. How do you know if one is fake or not fake? So, I mean, the, the first thing is you should always search up the person who's reaching out to you who says as a recruiter and the job and the company online, right? Any recruiter is gonna have you know, profile on LinkedIn, that sort of thing, right? So you're going to be able to, you should be able to find out the the real contact information for the company. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that this this is a real company with a real reputation that's offering you, you know, a real position. And and, and when, when the scammer reaches out to a candidate, I mean, that's a big ego boost because they normally say, wow, you're qualified, we're offering X amount of dollars. And it's very attractive, particularly when it comes to working from home. They just kind of th throw out a lot of um, ammunition, so to speak, to kind of lure in people like, wow, working from home, I'm making this kind of money. This is a great opportunity. I don't want to screw this up. So they pretty much hand deliver everything that the scammer asked for because they don't want to lose that job opportunity. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, one of the some of the red flags you want to look out for in these kinds of situations is there's a lot of uh, w one of the really common scams is kind of like a is a check scam. Very soon they'll say like, okay, we're going to pay you, but we're going to need you to send money back for taxes, right? So they'll send you a check, and it'll show that it's cleared, and you show it up in your bank uh, that it's that it's there, mm -hmm. and you'll think, oh, that's great, that's money in the bank. But then that check's going to bounce later, and so but they'll be pressuring you to say like, okay, I want you to either buy gift cards with for that with us or wire money back to us for taxes or for some other reason. That's a super common sign for these work from home scams that they're not legitimate. So you need to walk away right away if you see something like that in particular. Let me just kind of expand on that. People always want to work from home. And I know one common scam is they will send you a check like you had just indicated. And then they will say, listen, you need to use this check and send it to the software company in order to buy your laptop and your software in order to work for our company. And like you said, the check is is rubber. It, it bounces like a piece of rubber, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 by, and by that time you're out that money because you've already forwarded, you know, the, the two or $3,000 of what, whatever it is, then you're on the hook for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, a, and you're not going to get that money back. Right. The other thing to worry about with these kind of work from home things is, is often you get enmeshed in like illegal activity, right? It's either money laundering because you're passing money along to someone else. There's also all these reshipping scams going on where they'll, People will be buying laptops and things with stolen money. They'll send send it to you. It'll start appearing in your house and they'll say, send it on to some address in Russia. And you're paying for the shipping. You're sending the stuff over there. And you're involved in like, you know, sending money to a company, that, a country that's at war. And ultimately, you know, you can get in trouble for doing things like this. Um, have you seen anything new or different, Kevin, that's coming out um, with these scammers? They seem to be coming up with something new and fresh. Uh, they're always one step ahead. H have you noticed anything on the radar that kind of got your attention recently? Yeah, you know, there's there's so many different creative ways to get you to pay money, right? So they might ask you, they say, like, we got this great job for you. You just need to get this certification that we offer, or, you know, that you can get here. And so they'll point, you, they'll point you at, like, they'll try and get you to pay for some service or pay for some money up front. Or it could be a, a recruiter that's saying, like, you know, pay me the money and I'll find you this, your dream job. Right. But, but recruiters don't work that way. None of these services work that way. In particular, I think what, you know, someone's fresh out of high school, the, the fake recruiter is probably one of the things you really need to be worrying about. The way recruiters really work is the employer pays the fee. So you should never be paying the fee to a recruiter in advance. If you, if they get you the job, the employer will will give them the money. You shouldn't be having to pay any money up front. Yeah, let's uh, talk about the fact that the scammers hide behind the keyboard. If you're not talking 
in a Zoom or person to person and you're just emailing or texting back and forth, that's a huge red flag if you're not even physically talking to the, the person. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be able to see a face. You want to be on the phone. If it's like just an email or chat, you know, email, probably if you pay close attention, it's going to be like a free email service like Gmail, as opposed to, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, the actual company's domain name that's behind the email. Right. Um, and some of these young folks, let's say 19 or 20 years of age, if they are uh, given us a, a job opportunity from a scammer, they don't want to lose it, like we talked about earlier, but th they'll give anything that the scammer wants because they don't want to lose that opportunity. And I think the scammers at that point will ask for things like credit report. We have to make sure you have good credit before we uh, uh, you know, give you a formal job offer. Can you give us your credit report? Of course, that's that has all kinds of personal information. Uh, they don't relent, do they? No, they don't, right? And and it's kind of scary if it's if it's your first job because you're, you you know you do expect that at some point you're going to have to hand over your social security number, but they'll ask for it like way way in advance of when you would expect, right? You expect you you're going to go see the place where you're going to be working, you're going to meet people in person, they're going to tell you, you know, you're going to have a typically an in-person interview. Um, like if it's a local job, especially for someone straight out of high school, mm -hmm. they're going to want to see you in person. They're not going to just be okay with like, you know, a little video chat or, right. or even, you know, online chatting or emailing back and forth. And then if email you a job without ever meeting you, you know, so you really want to wait and make sure that you're kind of filling in um, hard, hard copy things in person after a proper interview and not just, you're not just handing that stuff away like candy, right? That's very dangerous. Right. And I, I can't say enough that if you have not met the person, even through zoom, if you can't see a face, then run, I mean, don't walk, run away from what you think is a, a job opportunity. So I'll give you a little example. I have a, a son who um, is looking for a job and of course he's posting his resume online and scammers, they go through, they troll through that. So before I get to my story, uh, can you, can you elaborate on, on, on what scammers do and, and what they look for? Yeah. I mean, once, when you put your uh, resume online, right, you're putting a lot of contact information on there, you, you, typically your phone number, your email address, and, and, you know, you, some people even put their address on there and other, and other information that's, you know, pretty sensitive, right? So you want to kind of provide, you can protect yourself by, by, you know, maybe using a unique email address that you're only using for, for applying to jobs. And then you can kind of recognize, okay, this is probably a scam because it's coming, you know? Yeah. Uh, to, to address, so, so so getting back to my son, which this probably happens, I mean, countless times, he gets not a job offer, but what appears to be a, a, a very interesting email from the HR director for a very well-known company that I will not name. Um, but it was very, it was, it was very interesting because it was a work from home. Okay. He likes that. It was offering a lot of money. And of course, you know, everybody likes that. Um, but it, he, he felt like something was not quite right with that. And he, he sent the email to me and he was like, Hey dad, is, is this a scam or not? And I looked at it and I was like, well, I know the company, the company's very reputable. It's, it's across the nation. Um, this doesn't look bad. But then when I scrolled through the email, I saw misspellings and this is one little trick at the, at the bottom, um, the scammer had indicated, if you want to find out more about our, uh, our company, click the, click this link. That link was actually the legitimate link for the legitimate company. So you think if you go to that link and you, oh, wow, this is a big nationwide company. But the thing that triggered, uh, me were the misspellings. For instance, if you, if you want to find out more about our company, it was like, if you want to W A N N A, I mean, <laughs> HR director is not going to speak like that. So, I mean, when, when it comes to these emails, you have to really scour them. And if they have misspelled words, most likely they're, they're somebody probably overseas, maybe broken English. They don't know how to, you know, speak or write. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to check, you need to check all those details, right? That's you, checking the links. Isn't enough. You want to check the email address that it was sent from, make sure that it really is from the domain, check for misspellings also in the domain name, right? Cause it might be, you know, they may have slipped an extra letter in there or don't mm -hmm. drop the letter. And it, you know, it looks, looks pretty legitimate, but when you pay closer attention, you realize, you know, actually this is like maybe a, 
you know, a free webmail service that's that this is based off of, not what I'd expect. Hey, um, how important is it in the browser if you get an email? I think it has to have the HTTPS. Tell us what that is and why it's important for that to be there in the email that you get. So, so yeah, when you HTTPS, it means that the connection is going to be encrypted. So anytime you're sending information off to somebody, uh, private information online, you want to make sure that it's over an HTTPS connection. So any of the links that are included in the email, you want to, you'd expect them to be HTTPS and you'd expect them to be going to be going to the domain that you know and trust. If it's not HTTPS, it means that anyone who's kind of sniffing on the, on the internet connection in between you and the recipient can see everything that's being sent back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's a bad sign. And if you see links in the email that are HTTP and not HTTPS, you know, that's a sign that it's, that's, that's, it's pretty unusual. That's not, that's not a good sign at all. Yeah. Um, I know one um, tip is of course, trust your instincts and which is kind of what my son did. He, he didn't feel quite right. So of course he got dad involved and I've been doing this so long that I, I can spot a scam, you know, a mile away. Um, but that's a good idea. I mean, don't jump on something right away research it trust your instinct before you do anything and talk to people about it right like you know talk to someone that you trust talk to your talk to your dad and if you can or so, someone who who uh who can give you you know especially if you're if you're suspicious about something yeah have you heard of job candidates losing a, a just a t either a ton of money or losing their identity Wh what's happened with them yeah, I mean, you know, often the scammers will they'll often ask you for your social security number really soon in the process, right? So as soon as they have your social security number and your resume, like that already is enough that they can steal your identity. And so you can use a lot of money that way. And then these check scams, of course, another way you can lose a lot of money. So, you know, there's plenty there's plenty of ways you can lose money, unfortunately. Yeah. And you, what about yeah. the what about the babysitter scam? I've I've talked about that for so long now. You know how that works, right? Yes. Yeah, so let's see the the babysitter scam. I mean, yeah, that's that's where when somebody the scammer is posing as like a, a dad or a mom, and they and they need a babysitter and um, you know uh, or a nanny. Uh, usually, it's a nanny, and then uh, they send the nanny a, a check in advance, and you know to to buy you know. Uh, material or items uh, before you know we we whether it's a high chair or a, a crib or whatever and then of, of course you know they deposit the check and then they send the money off and they're out uh, it, it just it happens all the time and i feel so sorry for these people because they're they're young you know these victims are young they just want to make money and and a lot of these people are, are desperate for money i mean we've seen it over christmas where people are trying to make a little extra money over christmas mm -hmm. so they end up saying oh i'll I'll take in, you know, it's it's the holidays. I'll take in someone's gifts and then wrap them in Christmas paper, or right. in wrapping paper, right. and then ship it off. And then, you know, the postal service inspector, the FBI starts showing up at their door, right. and 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 they're out. Not only did they not make any money, they're out a bunch of money. It really puts people really behind in, in, a, in a situation. Yeah, and then you know, not to, not to mention, I mean, now they're under uh, the microscope of of law enforcement for something they didn't even mean to get involved with. So, yeah, I think, I think one of the reasons these babysitter scams are are dangerous is because they're really going after young people, right, who are excited to get their first job, and they don't really understand what how these things normally work, right? So. So often it turns into one of these check scams or, you know, send us uh you're going to need to buy a pack and play or a crib and bring it with you or something like that, or, or send it to us, um, that sort of thing. And so some of these kids will think, not realize that this isn't normal, right? It's kind of the optimistic uh, nature of youth. Yeah. Uh, so um, graduation time, a lot of people out there, um, young people, I should say, whether it's uh, graduating from college or high school, looking for a job like we we were, uh, mentioned earlier. So just be careful. I can't I can't say enough, and I, I think you would agree, uh, Kevin, that if you if you can't see the person face to face, it's always through an email or a text. Forget about it. Um, don't give anything early on a credit report or social security. Uh, that's a total red flag. And do your research. Uh, if it looks weird, well, even if it doesn't look weird, just do your research. If you have this this interesting email or maybe even a job offer to you, you, make sure that it's really the company or a company that you think that you're dealing with because most cases uh, it's not. It's a really dark world with this world wide web, isn't it? 
Yeah, it is, you know, and I really like your advice to make sure you're talking to 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 a person and see see their face on Zoom is a great tip because there are some online jobs, right? But they they have no reason to want to hide their face. They want to see your face. They want to see how you interact. So they're not going to be afraid to hide their face. So you see somebody, you know their name, you see their face. Now you can look them up on LinkedIn. If it really is that head of HR or someone who's who they claim to be, you'll be able to find them on LinkedIn every time, right? Yeah. And be able to match the face to the name and say like, okay, that is the person I talk to over Zoom. Right. All right. Listen, great advice. We really appreciate you uh, being on the On Your Side podcast, Kevin. If people want to find out more about you or about Norton LifeLock, um, any uh, websites or social media accounts you want to kick out there? Yeah, you know, just go. We, we offer uh, great security services and identity theft protection services on Norton.com and LifeLock.com. And, on you know, we have other offerings as well. But, yeah, stay safe out there and, and uh and guard those identities. Yeah, be careful on the web. You don't want to wind up on the dark side. All right, Kevin, thank you again for joining us and um, have yourself a great day. Thanks for being on the On Your Side podcast. Thank you, Gary. The On Your Side podcast is produced by Brad Denny, our audio engineer and editor is Todd Martin, segment producer is Colin Stanton, and I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. If you have a problem you can't resolve, maybe we can't, Send us a message through azfamily.com or our AZ Family mobile app. Look for the On Your Side section and leave us a message. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Side podcast. And if you like it, leave us a review. We'll see you next week. On Your Side is on Good Morning Arizona every weekday morning at 645 and 7 o'clock and every weekday evening on Good Evening Arizona at 4 and 5 o'clock. You can also catch it on Arizona's Family News at 9 on 3TV every weeknight.